And now it's time for another vacation rental mailbag. Oh, I love this show. Today's topic is restocking supplies for your Airbnb or your vacation rental. I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Today's show is brought to us by turnovercleaningtips.com. That's a resource hub with a bunch of restocking supplies and tips and blogs and a community and a whole bunch of stuff where you can connect with other Airbnb owners and house cleaners that provide the turnover service. So check it out at turnovercleaningtips.com. All right, on to today's question. There are five different areas of restocking supplies that we're gonna talk about today. They are bedding and towels and paper products and drinks and cleaning supplies. Those are the five that we're gonna cover today. The first is how do I arrange the bedding and what kind of bedding or linens do I need for my Airbnb that I have to turn over on a regular basis? That's the laundry, that's the washing, whatever. All right, so the rule of thumb is every bed should have linens. It should have a set of sheets, it should have a comforter of some sort, and every bed should have two pillows. Now, if you want to, you can include two extra pillows in the closet. I also recommend an extra set of linens in the closet just in case somebody pees the bed or something while they're there and they wanna change their own linens. They don't have to call you to come over and try to redo the service while they're there. They are able to change the sheets themselves. So I would say one extra sheet in the closet. And also in the event that your house cleaner comes and doesn't have time to do the laundry in between the turnover service, they can use the spare set and then bring back the other set to put in as a spare set. The other thing that we have about bedding is I would recommend a spare blanket that you also put in the closet. There are a lot of people that are super cold blooded And so even though you may have a light comforter on the bed, they need an extra blanket to cozy up with. Or maybe they take the extra blanket out and they use it sitting in front of the TV so that they're a little bit more comfortable and can wrap up without taking the bed apart, right? So those are the linens that I would recommend for your Airbnb. All right, the next section are towels. What kind of towels do you provide? All right, there are a few different types of towels. The first one are bath towels. I would recommend that every person have two bath towels. And I say two because I know when I take a shower, I need two bath towels. I use one for me and one for my hair. And so I like to wrap up in two towels. So two towels per person for the remainder of your stay. Now, most people are savvy enough and you can put these signs up that says we recycle our towels. So please hang it up. And then you wanna include hooks to hang up those towels so that they can reuse those towels for the next day. And if they only use one towel and they're there for a couple of days, they can use one and then use the other one. So two towels per person, bath towels. Now also in the bathroom, I would recommend having hand towels because the hand towels will allow them to keep from dripping water and things on the floor. So a couple of hand towels, also hand towels are good for if they wash their face or something, they can dry it when they're done. All right, so I would say two hand towels per person for every bathroom that you have. Now in the kitchen, there are also hand towels and I would recommend having one hand towel on a little hanger that's inside the kitchen. Now, some people put the hanger over the dishwashing handle or over the oven handle, and they leave it there so people can dry their hands. But I would have it displayed visibly so that people are not digging for paper towels, which is wasteful and it's expensive when they could be drying their hands on a hand towel. So in the kitchen, I would have at least three dishcloths that they can use to wipe up dishes if they wash their own dishes, and then also a hand towel where they can dry their hands. All right, another towel set that I would recommend, it's optional, but I would recommend it. There are dark towels, and I will leave links in the show notes to all the towels that we're talking about and the linens, but dark towels that are hand towels left in the bathrooms used for makeup removal. Now, here's how this works. If you are using white towels, which lots of Airbnbs use white towels and white linens so that they can toss it all in the wash with some OxyClean and they can rebleach everything and everything stays nice and clean and shiny, And then also if there are stains or spots or whatever on the linens, they can see those and treat those before the next guest comes in. Okay, so the dark makeup towels are just that. They are makeup removal towels so that they don't have to be picture perfect and pretty. And they are designed just for, I don't know, that heavy eyeliner or mascara or any of the stuff that comes off on the towels because we don't want customers using those on our white towels. That's not cool. All right, so a makeup removal towel. And I highly recommend these because if they are available, people will use them. All right, so let's move on to paper products. What kind of paper products do we wanna leave? The rule of thumb for paper products, and we're talking about paper towels and uh, toilet paper. First, I would recommend that paper towels, you have one roll of paper towels underneath the kitchen sink. 
It's available if you need it, but it discourages people from using it. And if you have that other towel in the kitchen, that's for them to wipe their hands on. If there's an emergency and they cook something and there's a grease spill or something, you don't want them using your regular hand towel to wipe that up. And if I were in an Airbnb and that happened to me, I would go in search of some paper towels. And so if you dig under the sink and you find, oh, look, there's a a roll of paper towels, I would use a few of those to clean up my mess. So you want to have them available, but you don't want to encourage their use. Again, it's wasteful. Okay, so toilet paper. How much toilet paper do you leave at the toilets? Ha! This is up for debate. There are so many different Airbnb owners that have discussions, but there's a lot of waste. So my recommendation is two rolls of toilet paper per bathroom, and then in the hall closet or your storage closet or wherever your broom closet is, that you keep an extra pack of toilet paper. And when I say an extra pack of toilet paper, I'm talking maybe 12 to 15 rolls so that they can go there and realize this is part of the supply. These are not welcome for me to just take the whole 12 pack and and go home, right? Because there are people who have done that. And so you don't want to encourage that. And you just don't want to leave lots of toilet paper in the bathroom because that also encourages waste and misuse. So two rolls of toilet paper. All right. I would put one box of Kleenex in every bathroom. The Kleenex is also good for makeup removal or if they have a cold or something and they need to blow their nose, it's available and they're not running through all the toilet paper when there's a box of Kleenex there. And usually people use two or three Kleenex. They don't usually use the whole box, but to have a box available, that's nice. All right, the last paper product that I would recommend are makeup removal pads, which are these little round cotton pads or cotton balls. And the reason that I recommend those is if you have heavy eyeliner and makeup, you don't just want to use a cloth. You want to remove the makeup first, then wash your face with the dark cloth that I said was optional. That's really not optional. (laughs) I do recommend you have one, but they can remove all the makeup first with the eye remover makeup pads and toss those away. And ideally they would bring all that stuff themselves, but I would make that available. Okay. Moving on to drinks. What kind of drinks should we provide? All right. The standard in the industry is coffee, tea, and water. Now, there are a lot of Airbnb owners that have gone above and beyond and they provide wine and beer and all these things. That is not necessary. We live in an AA-free society. Lots of people are not drinking anymore. You do not need to be buying beer and alcohol. If you buy beer and alcohol, it's great if you have it in an honor bar. And then you have a little list that has a price with each of the items that you have listed. There's a sign-out sheet so someone can sign their name on it and you call it an inventory list. And so they sign out on the inventory list, which means they drank two of the beers, which means you need to replace two of the beers and you need to charge them for that. Now the honor bar in lots of places just has a little bowl where you drop your money in. Lots of people take cash app and on the note, it says, Hey, just send me this amount of money via cash app and the email address to which you can send it. That way it's taken care of. It's paid for. They can drink as much or as little as they want, but there's less likely use or drinking of it if they know they got to pay for it. All right. The coffee, tea, and water is free. And there's a big debate in the industry. Do I go with a coffee maker or do I go with the Keurig? And I prefer the Keurig because it's easier to clean. And what you may do, and lots of people do this, is they will take pictures of the coffee bar. This is our coffee bar. This is what is available to you. And they will say, we have a starter pack of the coffee K cups, and we have the packs of tea and then bottled water. And it shows a picture of what they get per day. And so people can look at that and go, well, that's not the kind of coffee that I drink. And you can say, this is what we provide. If you have special flavors and special blends that you choose, bring those with you so you can enjoy those on your stay and make that, make it very clear that this is a starter pack and there aren't gobs of different flavors at your coffee bar. That way they know there will be coffee if they want it. But if they're going to bring their own exotic flavors, they need to bring those with them. And lots of people travel with K cups. So that's a great way to do that. And it's not expensive for you trying to fill your coffee bar with one of every type of flavor, right? That's expensive. All right. So for the tea, you can have a couple different kinds of tea packs and they come in bulk. So you can buy boxes of like 96 tea bags or something for a few bucks. I'll leave links to those in the show notes as well. Not expensive, but to have them available is nice. And then I would provide two bottled waters per person per day. These you can put inside a shelf or you can put these inside an area that says, Hey, this is for your supply while you're here. That way, every time they leave the house, they can take them, they can manage them, they can budget them, whatever they want. But when the supply is gone, it's gone. All right. So if when someone checks into your listing, they can see all the different elements that you have available to them, they're going to go, Oh, wow, this is really awesome. And then they can plan what they're going to bring around what you have available to you. 
But if you have a list and it's very crystal clear what you provide, it's very crystal clear to the guests, these things are available to me. And they're not going to go digging through your private refrigerator or they're going to be expecting that you're going to be bringing them three and four and five rolls of paper towels and all these things midway through their trip. So you want to make it very clear to them. And then on your house rules, you can also say, hey, these are the things that we have available to you. Booyah. And if for any reason you need different brands or you need additional supplies, there's a nearby store and then put a list of the nearby store and the hours of operation. And so that way they can go get their own supplies and they know that you're not going to keep restocking for every day of their vacation. All right. The last area that we want to talk about are the cleaning supplies that you make available to your guests. Now, most guests have already paid a cleaning fee, so they're not expected to clean up. But if you have cleaning supplies on hand, this will allow them to clean up after themselves if they make a mess. And I say this because if they spill a bunch of crackers and crumbs and pretzels all over your floor, they can vacuum that up if there's a vacuum available. If they spill something on the kitchen floor, there's a mop available to them. So they're not using all of your cloths and all of your paper towels to clean up an accident. So you want to make sure there are cleaning supplies available to them. So what are the cleaning supplies? Okay. Available to every guest. And I would keep this in a broom closet or a cleaning closet or whatever, and label it as such. In the cleaning closet, there's a vacuum and there's a mop. And at every toilet in the house that is available to your guests, there needs to be one toilet brush and a plunger. If they back up the toilet, you want them to be able to have the tools they need to unback it up and clean it out so that it's not nasty for the next guest or for the house cleaner. All right. The next thing is in the cleaning caddy in your closet or under the sink or wherever you put your cleaning supplies, I recommend three terry cloths and one non-scratch scrub sponge. I also recommend one bottle of all-purpose cleaner and one bottle or one can of all-purpose cleanser. Now this would be like barkeeper's friend or comet or something like that. So this way, if there is a mess for some reason, they can clean it up. There's a non-scratch scrub sponge and there are a couple of cleaning towels in the event that they want to clean up their mess. So it's not required. It's not mandatory, but it's available to them in the event that they need that. And they will thank you in spades. I know that I've gone to Airbnbs. When I found the cleaning supplies, I was like, yes, I know exactly what to do with this and I can clean up after myself. All right. So I hope that helps a little bit. If this was helpful to you, please pass it on to a friend in the Airbnb industry. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.